So Joe's going to do one more thing before he gets on an airplane today. What you doing, Joe? Well, I got one more handshake to disconnect, and then I can connect to the uh, ADS-B. And uh, that's just a matter of programming and a transponder check. And, and a spark plug repaired. Yep, yeah, and this bird will fly. Um, and why are you installing ADS-B on this? Uh, so people could see it on the way home <laughs> and it never had it before yeah yeah it's been uh, parked for so long that it didn't need it it wasn't it required back that, then that's right so all right we're going to get this wingtip on and then i'm going to go put joe on an airplane to go back to pennsylvania and i'll be back here tuesday to uh see about having the spark plug hole repaired okay Wingtip is on. We just have to uh, get the uh, UAvionics wingtip ADSB program. We'll do that when we get the transponder check. Um, then the only other thing we have to do is fix the spark plug hole, and then this bird will be ready to fly. I'm back at the remote rebuild rescue site, trying to get this uh, Comanche out of this hangar and back to Pennsylvania. Uh, we finally have everything just about done. Transponders being repaired. Uh, the uh, hydraulic leak for the master cylinder is taken care of. And we're working on getting the helicoil replaced on the, the cylinder head. So right now, the mechanic is trying to extract the old helicoil. Can I hold the light for you? Yeah, if you would. I don't mind at all. Goodbye. So while our mechanic is camera shy, <laughs> he's uh, been doing this for, what'd you tell me, 56 years? 56 years. Yeah. We'll get the old helicoil out, and I'll get back with you. Okay. Bob's got that helicoil where he can get a hold of it with pliers. He tried to use a fancy tool a little bit ago, and it just wouldn't take. What he had to do was just get the edge, get the edge where he could get to the end of it. Okay, this is really good news. So you skipped a thread. Uh-huh. So the spark plug went in, it actually caught that thread, and it pushed it out of the... Okay. <laughs> so here's the old helicoil, and the very nice, clean new one. So we'll get this installed here, and, and go from there. So he's loaded up the flutes on this to keep the chips from going in the cylinder. That would not be a good day had by anybody. We're going over size because nine times out of ten you can't get a standard heat coil to go tight in it once the other heat coil is pulled out. Right. And this one's a lot easier because 
A mechanic has it already tried to get it out himself and tap it with an automotive tap. That's why we stopped where we stopped. And normally <laughs> when that happens, I'm going to screw those threads up, and I had the hardest time trying to line these tabs up going in there. Okay, we're not actually making the hole larger this way. What we're doing is the oversized heater coil, the threads are thicker on it. Okay. So they're 10,000 thicker than the old ones. So we're actually cutting some material out of the standard thread to go to the oversized on it, but we're not increasing the diameter. Okay. Problem is, I'm watching you and not what the camera's doing. <laughs> How old are you, Bob? I'll be 75 next month. Punk kid. <laughs> How old are you? I'm just going to be turning 70. I was telling uh, Jeff's buddy, Andrew, huh? that... Uh, um, I, as I get older, as I get older, the difference between me and old people age is narrowing. You know, it's still hard for me to deal with this senior citizen. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you feel like you want to react like you're 50 years old. <laughs> yeah, that's not happening anymore. Okay, it took a minute. The helicoils coils didn't want to cooperate, so I had to use a second one. But that helicoil coil is in there. Now we got to uh, get rid of the tang that's in there and stake the helicoil coil in there. And uh, then we'll go from there. So now this tool has gone in there, and it has uh, staked the, the coil in there. And when it gets this loosened up, we should be able to put a spark plug in here. But I think you said you still have to face off the seat, yeah. right? Yeah. So it took a couple of tries, but Bob finally has the threads repaired on this cylinder head. He's going to go ahead and put the spark plug in there. We're going to get it torqued down. Go ahead, Bob. So much nicer. So I'm back here at Salt Lake International to work on this Comanche for rebuild rescue. Unfortunately, number one cylinder's got to come off, despite the best efforts of of the mechanic. We were unable to keep a Healy coil in there that meant anything. So Jason's ordered a new cylinder. Supposed to be here today. So my job is to get this stripped down so that Bob can come replace this cylinder. Okay, I've got this ready to go. Hold on. I've got the upper cowl off. I've got everything disconnected from the number one cylinder. So now it's just all about uh, the mechanic coming over. He wants to disassemble this, so I'll let him. And uh, hopefully the cylinder arrives today and the mechanic's ready to come over. So when that happens, I'll be back. All right, so here at the, we'll call it the Comanche hangar. Jan is over there. He's been helping me get this thing ready. We've got the new piston and rings. 
We've got the new cylinder all ready to go on. I've got uh, seven of the eight nuts off. I just got one more to take off. We'll get that and we'll start pulling this cylinder. <laughs> I've got the wrong wrench. That's why. I'll, I'll let us that out. <laughs> the wrench is down here. Good job, Bob. <laughs> Gee, how much better that works. <sighs> okay. I'll probably fast forward this. Okay. I think that's bit. five. Okay. Uh, so, yep, let's clean all that off. Pull these seals out of here. Well, what do you think there, Mr. Frank? Some uh, coil on there? Yeah. What do you think there, Mr. Frank? Okay. Do we want to load the we want to load the piston in the cylinder, don't we? Yeah, we do. Before we get crazy. Okay, so there's that. You put your seals back in here if you're cleaning out. Okay then. <laughs> 